Well, today there's a glimmer of hope because not only has it stopped snowing, but it's actually melting. I might make progress today. Well, here we go. It's time for another trailer makeover where I modify my Trillium Outback trailer because I just wanted to do things my way, customize it, stuff like that. And the first one, I concentrated mostly in this area in the front, starting off the shower, as well as just making this area here a little bit more livable. In this video, I'm going to work on other different areas of the trailer. Although it might be not be the same thing as your trailer, hopefully there's enough ideas that will inspire you. And that's really what I'm looking for. Because a lot of people need inspiring these days because it's been a challenge. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to beat around the bush here. The world's changed in the last two weeks. It's changed for me and it's changed for everybody. Um, everybody has their ways of dealing with it. For me, it's just carry on. I was modifying the trailer before it started and I will still be modifying the trailer. I can't camp. I can't really go anywhere, but I'm going to enjoy my time and be creative. And I hope everybody appreciates that. So let's get going. After getting the manufacturer to replace the galley with a sinkless counter and recessed stovetop, I wanted to reclaim some wasted space. I removed the fridge and had a peek inside. This confirmed that there was plenty of area in there to work with. Through careful measuring and taping, I outlined where I wanted the cut. Now this is normally pretty boring stuff to watch, but listen what happens when I speed it up. Ever want to know what the mating call of a pygmy moose sounds like? After cutting out the hole, it was a lot of hand sanding to get everything flat and burr free. Next I made a wooden frame to support the floor of the cabinet. I used melamine coated particle board as the base, as it was cheap and easy to clean. I also cut out a section of the right side of the galley for a small drawer. The sides would be plywood sprayed with grey rust-oleum. It was important to make everything removable in case I had to get at the wiring sometime in the future. Time for some more fast forward. This one sounded like a tarantula tap dancing. Well, there's my door. Now I'm sure there's some home decorator critics out there saying, well, that color doesn't match. It's not the same as this gray or the counter color and all that stuff. It's like, whatever. First of all, I'm using recycled materials. This was an old shelf, you know, with that hard cover, I don't know, whatever it is, enamel or plastic, whatever they put on the top. And uh, it was uh, made with particle board. And so I just cut it out to shape, um, similar to what was uh, on the drawers and the cabinets. But I couldn't match that color. I don't know what color this is. I ended up, like if you see in, in here, I've got a gray. It's kind of a bluish gray, and this is kind of an olive gray. I don't know what the color is, so rather than try to match it, I was just going to do my own thing anyway. Thank you. Uh, so what I did, now, this was MDF, these original drawers, and this is particle board. Now when you form and sand particle board, it has these little air gaps in it, which looks kind of grungy. But what I did is I just took five minute epoxy, put some on my finger, and just put it all around like that with my fingers and then let it dry. And it has this really neat texture and color to it. I actually like it. But in order to make things match, well, maybe I can't make things match, but in order that they don't stand out 
I thought of another idea. I was like, well, is there anything I can put here so uh, it wouldn't clash? And I came up with this. It's a write-on calendar uh, with the, uh, a dry erase felt pen and, whoops, <laughs> a magnet, which is a little bit magnetized at least. Now I'm only gonna get one chance at this. So how it works, it's self-adhesive. So you peel away. Oh boy. I think, well, I didn't get it. Okay, I'm not a good peeler with these things. There we go, I got two, well, almost got two. Okay, number three, be good to me. There we go. And the last one. Kind of an all thumbs guy. Oh boy, how many people tuned out because I couldn't get the strips off. Okay, here we go. I get one chance at this. I think about there. There it is. Door still works. I like it. Well, it was a little bit of effort, but I think it was worthwhile. Because what I've got is a nice storage space. Uh, right now, although I could change this, I'm just keeping things in Tupperware. And of course, the Tupperware can also be a dish pan as well. Um, the important thing to me was height. All the other spaces that I had around the trailer didn't have a lot of height. They're usually about that high. And what it's important for is stuff like bottles of wine, and even more important, two scoops of Raisin Bran. Now, to help with this, because it is pretty deep and dark, I also put a light so I can see what's in there. I think it's gonna work well. Uh, I may put sliding drawers, I don't know, but, at least for now, I have a little bit more space. That cutlery drawer already existed in the original galley. I just had to make up for the height I'd lost installing that recessed counter stove. Another essential for me was an easy install. I tend to be messy, especially when I cook, so a hanging paper towel holder was a must. It just took a couple of holes a couple of screws Now it was okay to be a slob With that upper bunk gone it freed up a lot of room above the remaining bed. But what could I add to make good use of that space? The corners seemed a little awkward for shelves, but the ceiling did have possibilities. I know the thin fiberglass wouldn't support much, but if I added a wooden base for strength, I could probably use hooks. After marking a spot with black tape, I peeled back the marine fabric to see if I could add support underneath. I needed to remove a square of insulation and then substitute the wooden block in its place. Adding a glob of epoxy on the back, I carefully glued the wood directly to the fiberglass. Once the glue had set, 
I use contact cement to refasten the fabric in place. After removing the marker, I screwed the hook securely to the base behind it. I did this on both rear corners. Well, now I've got the hooks secured in the corner. I can tell you what the purpose of them was. And here's what I came up with. I went on Amazon and I picked up these really super cheap, fast delivery. And what they are, are hanging baskets. So one goes there, and one goes there. And what I can use them for is storage, specifically anything with fabric. Um, usually I have a big bin underneath my bed that I store clothes in, but this allows me to keep things, you know, out in the open. And not only that, it keeps them aired. I really hate that plastic smell. So this gives me a chance to put things away um, and have them in a convenient location when I need them. And, you know, you can put anything in there, gloves. I'm not gonna weigh it down with jeans or anything like that, but uh, certainly as long as it fits, you can put it in. Gets everything out of the way and because they uh, they move around, I think once once it's in place, they're just going to move like that when I'm on the back roads and all that. So I think it's going to work. I've got to experiment. Um, is it the best color or design? Well, I did have a pink one. Decided not to use it. My next task was making better use of the only solid flat wall in the trailer. The bottom part had a bunk support I no longer needed and a second light that just wasn't much use. On the top was a more practical location for a light, but there was a thermostat that was already duplicated by the galley. And finally, two mini hooks that really couldn't hang much at all. Inside the closet was another useless feature, a 110 outlet for a long gone microwave, which he could only use if the closet door was open. But underneath the bunk support, it was all pretty ugly. Well, it's a good thing they invented acetone, as acetone will get rid of almost anything from fiberglass molding. Just don't use it on plastic, or it'll melt. Great for a permanent marker. I just wish it could also erase those holes. After removing the redundant light, I used its space to relocate the outlet that was in the closet. After removing the thermostat, I needed to get those adhesive hooks off. Those old pull tabs never work, and the best way to remove them is with a heat gun on low setting. But don't be light slim and heat a metal hook without gloves on. Ouch! In place, I installed a three-arm swivel hook. They swivel out of the way when not in use, have larger hooks, and carry more weight. Even my winter hoodie. One of the downsides of taking things off the wall of a fiberglass trailer is whatever attached them leaves all these holes. And there's a mass of holes here. I have no idea why there's so many holes in this area. Bonnie and Clyde would be proud. Now I could take a lot of time patching these up and trying to match the color. And I guarantee you're still gonna notice they're there. 
or I can do something inspiring. Yes, an inspirational poster can make all life's problems disappear. Now for those who are waiting for updates on the shower, good news. Well, on the last makeover video, I ended with putting the shower basin in, which was the laundry tub to use as a base for the shower. But since then, I haven't done anything on continuing with the shower at all. And the main reason being was it's been intensely cold. It's like never stopped. Every day was below freezing. Every night was even worse. So I couldn't do things like finish the fiberglass and install the, the drainage piece, which, which I have. You know, it just sort of screws up in the bottom and there's a, a plug there to keep the critters out and stuff like that. But I couldn't do any of that. So I went to the galley and worked on it instead. But now I want to go back and work on the rest of the shower. Now, this, some people thought this was the elephant in the room because it's kind of out of place and, you know, you're going to bang your head on it and stuff like that. I think I can actually incorporate this into the design. So that's what I'm next going to work on. Um, I'm going to do some experiments. I got to drill some holes. I hate when I have to drill holes if I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to do it anyway. Next, I made two wooden supports with the same diameter holes drilled three quarters of the way in. Well, I've got the corner shelf modified with two holes and two support pieces made out of wood that are secured in place. What are they for? What's hanging in this bag here? Which was just a, a tent bag that I'm recycling. And inside, I have PVC pipe, half inch, about two feet long with elbows. And I also have some stretchy cord. And the reason I have that is it guides one piece into the other. So you don't have to figure it out. So there's my square. Up here, I've got some hook Velcro just hooked and fastened to the ceiling with a ring on it. Here I have uh, something I picked up at a dollar store. I think it's uh, like a dog run with a uh, fastener on the end and goes through the elbow and the end is secured just with a, uh, a Mars set screw connector. It just seemed to be handy. So hook that up to that. Put this in one hole, lines up. This one goes in here, a little bit of a jiggle, and there we go. On the bag, in this pocket that just happened to be there, I have shower hooks. And they're all tangled up, but I'll figure it out. Now under here, you've seen before. This is the base of the shower. It's a laundry tub, which is used for storage of both the water as well as the shower curtains. Time for one last speed up. This one sounding like a pack of raccoons cleaning up a bag of potato chips. Well, it's confirmed. I'm not a good hooker, especially when hooking curtains to uh, curtain hooks. But I got it done. As long as I don't bang my head on the top, which I just did, as long as the curtains are in the tub, it should be fine. And they're uh, a little bit long. I want to make sure they're long enough that you could still sit. So you can do your little sit down shower kind of deal. So 
this front piece just hooks like that there put it inside the shower and that should still protect the floor and of course you've protected the fabric on the wall as well so that's part two we're not finished yet there will be a part three that's a guarantee so let me recap what I accomplished in this video. First, I took an unused section of the galley and made it into a large storage shelf and a cutlery drawer. I converted a wall that had limited use to a wall that was far more practical as well as inspirational. And after freeing up space above the bed, I added hanging baskets for storing clothes. The sitting area in the front corner now converts to a shower and then back again to a reading area. I think I did pretty good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video or got some ideas out of it. I know everybody doesn't have a trailer, but the point is to try new things. And when you're in a rut, and a lot of people are in a rut right now, this is the time to learn and be creative and find positive things. And I hope I'm a positive person. I, I think I am. I'm enjoying life. I'm going to carry on. But I, I encourage everybody to try new things if you get stuck. For example, last week I learned how to bake a rutabaga. I never even had a rutabaga before, but I baked it. I found some instructions online and it was actually really good. Do what you can. Enjoy life. Enjoy this time and learn from it. Be good. And the other thing I got to learn is how to spell. So that's another one on my list. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my other ones as well.